Welcome to another exercise in a workbook statistics. This time focusing on how to compare means or rather how to perform a test to check whether the arithmetic mean of a sample deviates from a given test value. So let's have a look at our exercise. Here we have a selection of the orders with an international book retailer reports the following delivery times as in days. We have this information here. Then our task test for an acceptable margin of error of 5%, the assumption that the delivery on average takes two days. Assume that the delivery times are normally distributed. Well, it's nice to know what we have given here, the margin of error and the normal distribution, but what we are missing is the standard deviation or the variance or any information in that direction. So we have to calculate this on our own. This always means we have to perform a t-test, especially since we have less than 30 or 50 observations. So, well, for the t-test, we actually need four different values. So let's go on determining those values. The first value we require is the arithmetic mean. But the arithmetic mean we can very easily calculate simply adding up all of our observations, dividing them by 10, giving us an arithmetic mean of 2.9. Then the second step is the variance, or rather the standard deviation, because nothing in this direction was given in the exercise text. So we start with the corrected version of the variance, corrected since we're working with sample data here. And for this, we're going to subtract from each of our observations the arithmetic mean. So it's always minus 2.9. Then we take the result to the power of 2. Adding up all of these sub results, we divide it finally, we divide this sum finally by 9. 9, that's just the number of observations minus 1. So 10 observations minus 1 gives us the 9 we divide here. If we put this into a calculator, we get as a final result 3.4333. However, well, that's the corrected variance. We're looking here for the corrected standard deviation, which we need in our test. So to get this, we simply take the square root of the variance, giving us here standard deviation of 1.8529. That's actually then the second value we need. And we only have to determine one more because one of the four values we require is the number of observations. And we obviously already had this up here. So the only value missing is the corresponding quantile of the t-distribution. We're using the t-test here because, as I mentioned before, we do not have any information on the variance or the standard deviation from the text itself. The corresponding quantile for a two-way or two-sided t-test is tn minus 1, 1 minus 1 half alpha. The test is two-sided because we simply want to have the result whether our arithmetic mean deviates from the test value. If we were to test whether it's larger or smaller, we would have to conduct a one-sided test. Here it's just about the deviation, so we're going to use the two-sided test. So what do we do with this? Well, the n, that's the 10 observations, so we have 10 minus 1, the first part here is 9, and we have 1 minus 1 half alpha. Alpha is the margin of error, and if you recall from the exercise, that was 5%. So we're going to calculate 1 minus 1 half times 0 0.05, yielding us here a value of 0 0.975. So in the table for the t distribution, we look up the value t 9 0 0.975. And we find a value of 2.2622. So that's our test value, uh, our reference value. That's the value we are later on comparing our test statistic with. So well, that's everything we have to do in preparation for conducting the test. So I'm just going to summarize those results in addition with the number of observations and the test value we're comparing with. And then to actually do the test, we need a test statistic for the t-test this is given as the square root of the number of observations. So here, the square root of 10 times the difference between arithmetic mean and test value. 
so 2.9 minus 2, divided by the standard deviation. If we calculate this whole expression, we get as a result for the test statistic 1.536. That's the value we are now going to compare to our reference statistic. That's our test decision. So we compare the test statistic on this side with the reference statistic on that side, and we see that our test statistic is definitely smaller. Whenever this is the case, whenever we have a smaller test statistic, we cannot reject the H0 hypothesis. We have to keep this. And H0 means there's no significant difference between arithmetic mean and test value. So those are not significantly different. This means for our exercise text or for the practical situation behind this, we cannot reject the assumption that the average delivery time is two days. Could be larger, could be smaller, but those are just random fluctuations. We have to assume this is more or less two days. Well, that's then everything there is to this exercise. I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.